In this presentation, we will continue developing the theme of half-range Fourier series. Recall that in part 1, we drew functions with a restricted domain and then extended them periodically in various ways. One possibility was to extend with no symmetry at all, and then we would expect a full Fourier series. On the other hand, we could take the basic unit of the function and reflect it in the vertical axis, giving us a symmetric looking function, an even function in fact. Even functions have only cosines and possibly a constant in their Fourier series. Alternatively, we could take our unit of graph for the function and rotate it about the origin by 180 degrees. This would create a function with odd symmetry. Odd functions have only signs in their Fourier series. Let's start with a basic unit. I'm going to choose the function f of t equals t plus 2, defined only over the part of the domain 0 to 1. This is what it looks like. We have to make a decision as to whether we want an even extension with only cosines and a constant, or an odd extension with only signs. I'm going to go for an even extension this time. This means that we have to reflect our graph in the vertical axis and then extend it periodically. Reflecting in the axis will give it a domain from negative 1 to 1, in other words a distance totaling 2. When we repeat the unit of function over and over again that will mean that the period is 2. This is what it looks like. See how the function repeats itself every two units. Period P equals 2. This also has implications for the angular frequency variable omega, which enters into the cosines and sines in the Fourier series. Remember, omega is always 2 pi over the period. In this case, with period 2, that means that omega is pi. You'll notice that there are a few missing points in this function that are not in its domain. I'm not worried about a few individual points. They will contribute nothing to the integrals we will do, and they will not have any effect on the final Fourier series. So what would we expect that Fourier series to look like? Well, it's an even function. There should be only a constant and cosines, and no sines. This is what we would expect. The constant is usually written with a half in front of it, and then the rest is a sum of coefficients a n with cos n omega t, but omega has been set to pi. We are perfectly entitled to write immediately b n equals 0 for all n for this function. We could calculate the b n's if we wanted, but we would find we are wasting our time, they are all 0. The b n's are the coefficients of sines in a Fourier series. Sine is odd and our function is even. There cannot possibly be any signs. That means we are entitled to immediately write bn equals zero without further consideration. Our real task now is to evaluate the a0 and the an's. Let's look at a0 first. To get a0, all we need to do is integrate our function with 2 over the period the period is itself 2. We need to integrate over a whole period. Most commonly we do that from minus a half the period to plus a half the period. In our case, negative 1 to 1. Then we need f of t dt. The question is, what is f of t? We know that it's 2 plus t for part of this domain, but we're not so sure about the other part. We need to think about this a bit. Let's draw our basic unit of function from negative 1 to 1. There it is. The right hand part is f of t equals 2 plus t or t plus 2. But the left hand part is something different. In fact, it is the function f of t equals 2 minus t. 
When we're doing our integral, at first sight it looks like we would have to use both of these definitions of the function. So we would have to write a0 equals the integral from negative 1 to 0 and use 2 minus t and then add the integral from 0 to 1 and use 2 plus t. We have two integrals to do. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way, but actually it's rather wasting our time. We could use the symmetry of the function and only do one of the integrals. Think about what the integral means. It's the area under the curve. The area under the right hand side of this function, let's shade it in red, is clearly equal to the area under the left hand side. Even though the rules for the function are different there, those areas are equal because the function has been defined to be even. It has symmetry about the y-axis. So instead of doing two integrals, we could use this symmetry and simply say that the a0 is twice the integral from 0 to 1 and now we only need to use 2 plus t. We don't have to worry about 2 minus t. We don't even have to worry about finding out that it was 2 minus t for the other part of the function. We simply do the integral. 2t plus a half t squared and substitute the values. When we substitute the 1, that's going to make 2 and a half. That has to be multiplied by 2 and so we end up with 5 for our a0. Well in the case of a0 the functions were quite simple to integrate so it was not such a big deal that we made this shortcut. But what about the an's? Could we be so lucky there? Let's write down the expression for an. I've done that already here. 2 over the period, integral over a whole period, then f of t times cos n pi t dt. Could we get away with the same trick of replacing it with just twice the integral from 0 to 1? The answer is yes. f is an even function. But also cos n pi t is an even function. Remember when we studied even and odd functions in an earlier presentation we learned that even multiplied by even is also even. Drawing f of t times cos n pi t might be quite tricky, but we don't have to draw it to see the symmetry. We simply trust that it is an even function. That means that we can now evaluate a n by doubling up the integral but taking only half of the integration range, 0 to 1. Between 0 and 1 f of t is t plus 2 cos n pi t dt and we don't have to worry about the 2 minus t part on the other side of the vertical axis. The next stage is to evaluate the integral. This would require integration by parts. We've discussed integrals like this in another presentation entitled an Integrals in Fourier series. There we discussed how there would be two approaches. If you have tables with integrals in, then you might break it up and simply look up the t cos n pi t part. If you don't have tables and you have to do it by hand, then you have to use integration by parts. This is not a presentation on integration by parts, so I'm simply going to write down the answer. Here it is. What I do want to do, though, is to talk a little bit about substituting the limits in, because this can cause grief to some people. Let's think about the sign, first of all. Before we start writing, let's think about what's going to happen. When you substitute t equals 1, you'll get sine n pi. n is a whole number, remember. The sine of any whole numbers of pi is always 0. It doesn't matter what's at the front of it. In the same way, when we substitute t equals 0, we will get sine of 0. That is also 0. So we can, without further ado, cross out 
the entire first term. Well, that saves a certain amount of thinking, doesn't it? Let's now put the substitution into the cosine term. Here we do need to actually do the, uh, the bit of work. We get 1 over n squared pi squared and then when we put in 1 we get cos n pi and minus and substitute 0 cos of 0. Cos of 0 is 1 and cos of n pi is negative 1 to the power n. That's a result you're really expected to remember now. Notice what effect this has. The answer depends on whether n is odd or even. If n is even, minus 1 to an even power, that's like minus 1 squared or to the fourth, etc., it's just 1. So then the a n has a 1 minus 1 in it and is 0. On the other hand, if n is odd, then minus 1 to the n, that's like minus 1 to the 1 or the 3 or 5, that would be negative 1 again. The negative 1's now double up, and so the a n are minus 2 over n squared pi squared. This finally allows us to write down the half-range even Fourier series in terms of cosines f of t is a half a0. Remember that a0 turned out to be 5, so that's going to be 5 halves. Then we need the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, and we need to choose the a's multiplied by the cosines. But we only need to single out the odd a's. Let's just go back and have a look at the a's again. Minus 2 over the coefficient n squared and pi squared. The minus 2 over pi squared could come to the front. What remains to go inside is a 1 over n squared, but we want to make sure that the n's are odd, but that we start at 1. To achieve that, we write 1 over 2n minus 1 squared in the sum, and also use cos of 2n minus 1 pi t. This singles out just the odd coefficients and none of the even ones for which the a's are zero. Tidying up a little bit, I'd like to get rid of the plus next to the minus and write this as minus 2 over pi squared sum n equals 1 to infinity 2n minus 1 squared cos of 2n minus 1 pi t and that is our half range cosine series. I want also to write down a half-range sine series for this function, but that will be the subject of a further presentation as this one is now becoming rather long.